As explained in verse 18, it is by fire, smoke, and brimstone that one-third of all mankind will be killed. And remember, this is one-third remaining after the one-fourth had died after the seven seal judgments. So this is one-third of that remnant that has died. So in total, what that means, when we take the one-quarter who died during the seal judgments, and we take the one-third remaining who died during the trumpet judgments, we now have a total of one-half of all of mankind dead upon the earth. If we started out with 8 billion people in a time period of roughly three and a half to four years, half the population is gone. Can you imagine what it would be like to live on an earth where there are four billion dead people? We talk about devastation and horror. We have no idea. Of course, this is the point where many people ask, what kind of a God would do something like this? And this is where we as Christians have to ask, what kind of a people would reject a God who would sacrifice his only begotten son on our behalf? Now we also see, as explained in verse 18, it's by fire and smoke and brimstone that one third of all mankind will be killed. And verse 19 specifies that the power of the destruction is in their heads and in their serpent-like tails. Incidentally, the wholesale destruction of life by means of fire here is in keeping with the Noahic covenant found in Genesis chapter 9, verses 9 through 17. And this is very important because God is not a covenant breaker. We are the covenant breakers. That's why God made so many covenants to illustrate to us that we cannot keep covenants. That's why Jesus became our New Testament. He became our New Covenant. He is that last sacrifice, that final Passover. He is that covenant that cannot be broken. In Genesis 9, verses 9 through 17, God promised Noah, and by proxy promised all of mankind, by setting the rainbow in the sky as a token that no flood again shall be sent to destroy the earth. The rainbow we see in the sky today is the continuation of that covenant. Finally, in verses 19 and 20, we have the attesting to the utterly depraved state of the heart of mankind. Now watch this. Despite the horrific plagues that have already befallen them, and despite the unimaginable volume of gruesome destruction of life that they have witnessed, men and women everywhere will still refuse to repent. This may be sad, but when you jump ahead near the end of Revelation and you discover that even in perfect peace with the Lord Jesus Christ reigning on his throne in Jerusalem for a thousand years, the majority of people will still refuse to accept him as Lord and Savior and as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This doesn't become so surprising, but it is sad. Sadly, the incidents born of the rebellious hearts of the Hebrews which led to their conquest and captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, is now seen here on a worldwide scale. This time, however, it's not only Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who will be cast into the fiery furnace. It's not only the prophet Daniel who will be sent to the lion's den. At this time, all of mankind will suffer in like manner. And this time there will be no Savior from above to deliver them because, as the Apostle John has written in his gospel account, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil in John chapter 3, verse 19. See, many of these people will already have sold out to the Antichrist. They will already have received that mark of the beast. They will already have utterly rejected Christ, at which point they have declared eternally they will not be his. They will be Satan's forever which means they will be nobodies, because Satan can have no one. It's also of equal importance to simply list the items of which mankind refuse to repent, even after witnessing and experiencing the unmitigated wrath of God, which, by the way, he meted out simply by setting Satan loose on the earth. 
as he pronounces judgment upon the earth. We should remember as we look at this list of ungodly deeds that they are born of an ungodly heart. This is not God's will. It's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We should remember that hell is a place that's prepared for the devil and his angels, not for mankind. But mankind, in refusing to accept God's love, chooses his wrath. Therefore, these individuals, to whom, as we mentioned before, strong delusion has been sent, that they might believe the lie, as we saw in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, are utterly incapable of recognizing that the torments they now face are manifested by the Lord himself. Among the things they refuse to repent of, here the Apostle John lists, they refuse to repent of the works of their hands, which would be their evil deeds. They refuse to repent of demon worship, they refuse to repent of idolatry in any of its form. Putting anything before God is idolatry. They refuse to repent of their murders. And most of us today would say, well, I would never murder anybody. What about these terrible people that go around and they, and they murder people? And they murder one person or they go into a public place and they murder a dozen people or more. Well, what about the people who get paid to murder unborn children on a daily basis? You see, that's murder. God gives life. Man doesn't give life. Mom and dad don't create you. God does. God gives you life. God breathes into man a living soul. God had a plan for you before you were ever conceived. Man does not have the right to take that away. That's murder. I don't even want to list how many murders have taken place in the United States and abroad in the form of abortion. But that's murder. We're not repenting of that today, are we? sorceries. It literally comes from the Greek word pharmacia, which means the use and abuse of drugs. And no, it does not mean medication prescribed by a doctor for a specific purpose, to take care of a specific problem and used properly. But it does mean medications or things with pharmacological properties that are used and abused recreationally for nothing more than just social pleasures, fornication, and the Bible is very clear on this, any kind of sexual activity outside of the bonds of marriage, and thefts, literally, any act of stealing that is born out of a result of covetousness, jealousy, or spite. None of these things were repented of, despite the horrible, horrible consequences that the world was facing, or that the world will face, none of these things will be repented of in the time of the Great Tribulation.